try and write as much as possible. You need to get a lot of information today about yourselves and the things that you need to do. Write down. A successful life does not happen by chance. Have you written that? A successful life does not happen by what? By chance. You have seen so many people succeed. You have seen success. You have read about successful people. It will not happen by chance. You need to make a lot of efforts. So the topic is choosing your battle. Why are we talking about battle? But I've decided to make it strategies for managing your battles. Strategies for managing your battles. We have two types of battles. The chosen battles and the battles you choose. When we say the chosen battles are battles that you don't need to choose. They have been chosen for you. And the battles you choose for yourselves. You know, coming into this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, has created for us some trials. He has told you, I have created you for this purpose. Everybody, what is the purpose? To worship Him, right? But people think worshiping Allah is restricted to the mosque. So all they do is only Allah Akbar. You don't see them engage in investments. You don't see them engage in very productive careers. So when, it's, when I say chosen battle, look, marriage is a chosen battle because Allah has prescribed marriage. Yes or no? Uh -uh, you are not answering me. So if I ask you to give me the difference between a chosen battle and the battle you choose, the chosen battle is the battle Allah has chosen for you. And your, the battle you choose is what you have chosen for yourself. Look, marriage is a chosen battle. Why the type of spouse and the number of wives are battles you do what? They are battles you choose. Allah said, get married. Okay, fine. That is enough, is enough battle. But now, what type of a woman will determine what type of a battle you are putting yourself into? And how many women? Why is the use of the word battle? Why have we chosen the word battle? It is because Allah says in Quran 90 verse 4. Quran what? Do you know Allah himself says, What's the meaning of that? We have certainly created man into hardship. We have created you to toil. You have battles to fight. It is not going to be easy. Nobody is going to say, I want a building and find a building. No, you've got to struggle for it. Nobody is going to say, I want to manage a company and begin to manage the company. You need to go to school. You need to go through the stress. You need to work hard, read, pass your exam, go for this interview, go for that interview. A lot is about hardship. So if you see anybody who sits down as a lazy person, he or she will never be able to achieve anything. Another name for battle is trial. What is another name for battle? I love when you get as many information as possible. You need to get a lot. What's another name for battle? Now, when you say trial, Allah says in Quran 67 verse 2, the reason I have created life and death is to test you what you will do with what I have given you. What you will do with what? So, it means that if I give you life, you must use the life the way I have prescribed. 
If you use it wrongly, you have, faced, you have failed your trial. In order to now use it rightly, you need to plan. It's a battle. My mouth has been given to me, but in the Quran, he has described how to use the mouth. If I use it rightly, I will win the battle of the tongue. But if I use my mouth wrongly, I will have failed the battle of the... Of the... You are not with me. Battle of what? Of the tongue. So, it tells us that it is to test you. Life is about trial. Go ahead. Now, if you look at Quran 21 verse 35, Allah says, I will test you with what you like and what you do not like. If I ask you to define trial, some people think trial is something bad. No. Something good itself is trial. If I give you power, energy, is a trial. If I grant you weakness of the body, it is a trial. So you need to discover which one have I been given and how do I use it. Yes, next slide. Now, some people say, Allah, why are you testing us? Allah says in Quran 29 verse 2, do you think I will leave you without testing you? So we are trying to cope with the word battle. You've got to fight a battle. To succeed in life, you need a battle. So and part, part of the battle is you wake up in the morning and you are very lazy. But you must get to this place at 7.30. You need to fight yourself to a standstill. So it is that's what is called self-jihad. Fight yourself, fight the laziness in you, and then get yourself on the way. So you may have something and others don't have. Some have, others don't have. Yes or no? Some can see, others are blind. Some can hear, others are deaf. Some have very high intelligent quotient and others are imbeciles. So there are so many differences. But Allah says in Quran 6 verse 165 that, listen, whatever I have given you is to test you what you will do with it. So if I give you knowledge and you refuse to use it, it will be disastrous. Next one. Now, it says, I'm still fighting, I'm still discussing battle. Look at the number of verses on battle. This verse says, Quran chapter 2 verse 214, do you think you will just march like this and enter my paradise without me bringing before you battles? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he fought himself, he struggled, he was shaken with a lot of trials. So, that's why I want you to come into terms with the word battle. I think we have done that sufficiently. Now, do you know Allah has plans? Yes or no? Does Allah have plans? You are the plans of Allah. We are the plans of Allah. The heavens and the earth, they are the plans of Allah. Everything you see is the plan of Allah. But after Allah has planned, has Allah stopped us from planning? Talk now. As Allah stopped us from planning, you know, that's what some people believe. And uh, that's how Allah wants it now. Uh, you know, when they fail, that's how Allah wants it. When they are dirty, that's how Allah wants it. So I think we will tell you that a dry leaf will not fall from the tree without the knowledge of Allah. So this is my failure. Allah knows about it. As if Allah loves failure. No. Look at the statement. So, leave here, please. These two verses are very instructive. Because I just want you to know that apart from your own plan, there are some plans you cannot do anything about it. But some of these verses tend to suggest to you that you cannot achieve anything. No, you can achieve a lot. Let me explain these verses. Ma yaftai Allahu linnasi min rahmatin fala mumsika laha Whatever Allah has decreed will be yours no one can stop it yes or no Wa ma yumsik 
whatever Allah's withheld will not be yours. Nobody can give you beside Allah. Do you agree with these two verses? These two verses are established. Wallahi, whatever Allah has decreed will be yours, we surely get to you. What Allah, whatever Allah has decreed will never be yours, nobody can give it to you. These two verses, instead of launching people into exploration, you know exploration is, I want to discover what my Lord has written for me. You need to make efforts to discover. Some people sit down in their houses, they want to discover this. So, when they need to eat yam and beans, they say inside their house, Inshallah, if Allah has decreed that I will eat yam and beans this morning, somebody surely will bring the yam and beans because Allah said, My Look at how he's misinterpreting the Quran. Did Allah say, Stay inside your house, they'll bring bread and beans? No, you will make effort, you walk, you have income, you go and buy yam. It is when you look for yam and there's no yam for you to buy, in spite of you having your money, you know Allah has not decreed that you eat what? Are you with me? But without making effort, you cannot discover your destiny. What is called destiny is different from your own self-induced failure. Yoruba calls something Kadara and the second one Afawafa. What is the name given to it? Kadara and what? Everything that happened to them, they say is Kadara. They are so lazy, they cannot make effort, they are not champions in the industry. All you find them doing is, they are not even giving effect to the Quran, they are reading. They think the Quran is meant to make them lazy, sit down, not make effort, because Allah will come and open the door. No. To discover your destiny, is very easy how you discover destiny is follow all that Allah says follow all what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said avoid all what Allah asks you to avoid avoid all what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks you to avoid the result is destiny but if Allah asks you to be truthful and then you are a liar. The result is not Kadara. It is what? It is a forofa. There's a difference between Allah's induced trial and your own self-induced trial. So we need to make effort before you know that this is not my destiny. I've made effort. If you don't make effort, we cannot talk about destiny. Yes. Now, this verse talks about Allah gives and Allah takes. You know all powers are in the hands of Allah, yes or no? You are not answering me. What's the evidence that everything is in the hands of Allah? What's the evidence? Look at this verse. Allahumma malika al-mulik. Tuti al-mulika mantasha. Allah gives to whoever he chooses. Did you give yourself life? Did you give yourself your eyes? So as he gave you life, he's taking some lives. That's Allah. As he gave you eyes, he's taking, making some people blind. Says, I give it to whoever I like. I take it from whoever I choose. I honor whoever I choose. I humiliate whoever I choose. I was watching one sister last night. Maybe you have seen the video. That principal in El Kanemi, she was delivering a lecture she slumped and she died. So you can make effort, but when it is time, you will go. A Muslim in all this situation is never desperate. He is very agile, ready to explore, ready to discover what Allah has written for him. But the result, he accepts the results. But without making effort, you cannot talk about results yet. So this verse says, this shows Allah is a planner. All things we created with planning. We have planned everything. Yes, go ahead. Quran 57 verse 22. It says, Ma asoba min fil ardi wala fi anfusi illa fi kitab min 
Nothing will touch you except that me, Allah, I have written it in a book before I brought it into existence. So Allah is a planner. Allah plans. I want to touch you with this to test you. So all I've been saying is to let you know that our Lord plans. Yes. So Allah says, Lekeila. Go back to that verse. Lekeila ta'asawala ma'fata. I don't want you to start crying over what you look for which you did not get. And I don't want you to be overjoyous over what you have. The reason is, I have given you for a purpose. It is to test you. Now I'm going to the meat of the matter. Please go ahead. Attitude. Everybody say attitude. attitude. Again? Attitude. Huh? Attitude. I cannot hear you. Attitude matters in all you want to do. Attitude means the interpretation you give to events in your life. Attitude promotes and attitude can kill. Tell the person beside you, be positive. The sisters are not talking. Tell the person beside you, be positive. With the wrong attitude, one is dead on arrival. With the right attitude, you are set for success. Attitude really matters. That's why Allah says, look at the person. That, where is that verse? Hey, look, family and son. Look at man. Allah says, my intention is to test him. I granted him wealth, position. Instead of him to know that it is a trial, for your goal, Lord, we are crying. He's misinterpreting it. Say, Allah has honored me. Allah says, no. You have to use it. Use that wealth to achieve what I ask you to do. Otherwise, it is not a honor. It's a humiliation. Go ahead. So, I just want to leave this slide. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you correctly now? It's a question everybody must answer. Do you currently have a project you are managing? Please mention it or pass. You don't have a project, don't talk about it. If you have a project, raise your hand. Do you have a project currently that you are managing? Raise your hand if you have a project. If you don't have a project, please pass. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, only seven people have projects. So, all of you, you have no projects you are managing. Or oh, you didn't get me. You have no projects you are managing. Okay, go to the next slide. Some projects are chosen by Allah while you have the freedom to choose others. The projects are the battles you fight every day. You are going to see what I mean by project. Go to the next slide. Your entire life is a project. Do you know your life is a project? You are not following me. <laughs> your life is a project. How can you tell me you have no project you are managing? Your life is a project. Your entire life. Look, there was a course I attended. I remember when we were studying project management. And everybody was asked to mention what project. What one Chinese lady said is that I have registered for this course because of a project. What's the project? How to train my child. How to train my child. It is a project. Your entire life is a project. Number two, there's what we call PDP. What's PDP? Personal Development Plan. It's not political party. It's not what's supposed to be there. Your education is a project. You are in school. How do I pass my exam? It's a project. How do I get my admission? Just like many of you have plans for admission. It is a project that you need to write down and plan how to effectively go from one step to the other. It's a project. You have a project in your life. Business development is a project. I'm a fashion designer. How do I plan? How do I start? What do I need to start? How do I establish it? What should be the location? 
Is it the shop that matters now? Or my page on Instagram or Facebook or the interaction I have with my neighbors? How do I market it? What is digital? You know, this is business development. It is a project.